still Plus Politics, and thank you very much for staying with us. Now, talking about unemployment in Nigeria and what Nigerian Senate hopes to do concerning it is next. So, unemployment in Nigeria, which stands at 23.1%, has finally gotten to uh, the attention of the Nigerian Senate as they have raised the alarm over the rising rate of unemployment in the country. And they're asking the various tiers of government to urgently declare a state of emergency on the situation. Now, they went further to ask the federal government to initiate a sustainable unemployment fund. The payment, uh, it, this is going to be for the payment of leaving stipends for unemployed Nigerians until such persons are able to secure employment. Now, it sounds like a good initiative, doesn't it? But, but can this work in a country that is rife with corruption? Well, I won't be answering that question. My guest is still here. Um, Daniel Dupe is a lawyer and he's also analyzing these issues with me. So Daniel, you're a young person. Well, thankfully you are employed. <laughs> but we have heard all kinds of strategies before now. The trade and money. We've heard of the money for the poorest of the poor. I'm still trying to understand how we are able to define who's the poorest of the poor, how they were able to come up with the people who these monies went to, and how we're certain that these monies went to the people who needed it the most. Now, how do you also know who is unemployed and needs these stipends? And what's the amount of the stipends and what can it cover? And you know how it is in Nigeria. Can we trust the process? Before we even talk about trusting the process, the first question that comes to mind is, those who are working, mm -hmm. those who accept minimum wage, we still have the issue of the government saying they cannot pay. Is it you that you cannot pay people that do nine to five? Oh, we need to take a quick break. I'm so sorry. We need to take a quick break. We'll come back after the break. Stay with us, please. Apologize for uh, that break. We had to fix some technical issues, but uh, we're back. Anyway, we still have in the studio with us um, Daniel Odupe. Now, Daniel, we were talking about you know the National Assembly's move, the Senate, most importantly, uh, to ask the federal government to pay stipends to young people. And I asked the question of trusting the process, but you were saying that the people who are working already, the labor, the organized labor, is still unable to get 30,000 naira minimum wage. So what are we talking about? So what here? are we talking about? That's, that's, for me, that's a big question. What are we exactly talking about? You see, sometimes I think that um, they, they, they take us for fools or something, or they, sometimes they, 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 they insult our intelligence because- But the Senate is genuinely, I mean, I have to play the devil's advocate, they are genuinely trying to ameliorate the poverty and the sufferings of the Nigerian people, in their own words, not my words. No, no, no. With due respect, no, they are not. What they need to do, if they are sincere, is if you look at the budget for the past how many years now, the bulk of the money goes to all these expenditures, their allowances and what have you. That's what takes the civil service, the, the small 2% or 3%, they are taking the bulk of the resources. That's what we are not able to invest in in a capital budget as much as we, we should. That would have helped the economy. What Nigerians are asking for, what the young people are asking for, is not for stipends. They want you to make the to create the atmosphere, fix power, fix the roads, let there be peace and security, and you see their innovations at work. Every time a Nigerian go out of the country, they do marvelous things. So if you ask me, this is just I mean, what they need to do, they are sincere is to, I've, I've always advocated that, look, who says that people who are supposed to be serving us can, are not, you know, should not collect minimum wage? I don't understand, because that work is not supposed to be full-time work. Who says, I mean, just think about it, you're supposed to be doing something. And even if work. it were full-time? Even if you're full-time, who says you, because it's supposed to be service. Nobody said that you're going to come and hammer being a political person or being the senator. If they are sincere, that is, this is not what they should be doing. What they ought to be doing is to, make moves to reduce drastically. If you see a breakdown of the budget, you'll see that the bulk of the money is always going to the allowances and all, all those things that they keep on trying to, to increase. So this is an insincere move, if you ask me. The, and Nigerians can see through it. They can My concern 
it's not necessarily the stipends. My concern is the number of young people that we have in this country that are disengaged or unengaged, if there is such a word or a term. As I mean, look at the chat, 23.1%. And it keeps going up, whether we like it or not, unfortunately. Now, I have done my research and realized that one of the most important things that we have in this country is young people. We have them in abundance. Now, why the likes of the countries in Southeast Asia, like China, Singapore, uh, Bangladesh, are exceeding the way they're exceeding is because they make use of their manpower. In this part of the world, uh, we don't necessarily make good use of our manpower. Where are the industries? Where are the factories? We have none of those. And if we do have them, we hardly have these young people engaged. That's why there's a brain drain and a lot of people are running to these other countries to get engaged. We're asking ourselves every day why Nigerian young people run away to other countries and do whatever it takes to go to those countries because there are opportunities. So is this money, the stipends that they're giving out the best of ideas or should we not be thinking up better things that could better engage young people instead of paying them some stipends? Is that really what our young people need. In, indeed, indeed, we should be thinking of better ways to engage them. The stipends will not solve anything. If you take, for example, those who are already working, let's even leave the issue of the fact that the government is not able to pay them well. Even those who are being paid, how much is a salary? Is it able to meet basic needs sufficiently enough? So if you now look at those who are paid, those who are paying, and you are, the money, the resources they are being given is not even sufficient enough, how much more those you are now thinking of giving stipends, how much can you really afford to give them? How much will that even do? How, how far will it go? Will it stop them from crime? Look at the number. That strategy, in my opinion, is definitely wrong. It will not work to say you want to pay them. The, the amount of resources that you're going to put into it, it will not work. And I mean, I just imagine, will you be giving them 5,000? I mean, how much do you really be giving them that will really, really make them, you know, to now, you know, because according to the Senate, you know, they're saying that, you know, they, they, they are worried about unemployment and insecurity and what have you, and, you know, and they, they, they think that this is the way to curb all of that. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, what we need is, even if government wants to do a special program, you know, what we should focus on, in my opinion, should be empowering people via education, skill acquisition. When I say skill acquisition, I'm not talking about the popular ones. The, Soap the, making. The, no, 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 not, not that one. Basket making. <laughs> no, not, not the hilarious one. This is 21st uh, century. If you, programming, I mean, Nigerian youths have shown their capacity to learn quickly, to be smart, to be innovative. The other day, Nigeria was arrested in the US, you know, for successfully hacking into the most secured, oh, the supposedly most secured network in the world. That's, that's incredible. That shows how talented, how, how amazing we are. But so, we so, want them to be put to good use. Exactly. So that's my point. So we, so we are saying that, you look, you do not, that's not what we need. You need to empower them, create opportunities, you know, create ops, you know, where you know, power will not be interrupted, where people can, where young people can go to and work and do stuff with their aunt, you know, sometimes. So that's the real, those are the kind of way you should be thinking, not to be thinking of animal out stipends. And I want to believe that our I mean, senators and people in government are thinking men and women, because every day I go to work, I see young people sitting by kiosks, they're smoking hemp. So they're just idle, idling mm. away. And these people can be, you know the old saying, an idle person is uh, the devil's the workshop. workshop yeah. And we're all so afraid of terrorism mm. and illegal activities, just as the Senate is talking about. But then how do you get across to these young people? How do you find out their interests? Because you can't just say you want to give skills acquisition. What kind of skills are they going to acquire? How many of them are interested in it? Because there's so many people who have been given the opportunity to acquire skills. What do they do with the skills? So does it not go beyond that? And then in Nigeria, we're very interested in paper education. And the universities churn out many in their numbers. But those p paper qualifications still don't get us job. So the problem is, or the question is, what is the problem with us, Nigeria? No. No, Miriam, I think we should look at it this way. Um, the first question is, how do, we, how do we get here? Looking at our education system, the thing pointing to deteriorate, deteriorate, and, you know, people, even those who are in, in the school, the amenities are not sufficient, they're not good enough, the thing continues to deteriorate. Now, my point is, 
we didn't get here overnight. We are not about to get it solved overnight. Let's not make that mistake. Throwing steep stipend at them, we're definitely not solving it. And if we think that, oh, we just wake up one day and start doing skills acquisition quickly, everything will just change quickly. No, that won't happen. What we need to do, and that's why you need complete sincerity from government, what we need to do basically is to fashion out a way to constantly engage and interface with them. You know, like you said, you cannot help somebody that you don't even know exactly what they really want to do. So you, the kind of thing I need to hear, what we expect to hear from the government is a kind of program that will give the opportunity to interface regularly with them. You know these people, and that is not impossible. You, there are centers, there are local government centers. Yeah, it is very possible. Just the same way, you know, people have to pick up their INEC um, card and what have you. It is possible if the government is sincere to, con to constantly engage these people, to find out their needs, and then give come up with a program that will allow them to choose, you know, to, to, to do some kind of assessment where you now find out what they are good at and what they can improve on. And then another thing government can do is to come up with policies that deliberately, you know, targets, you know, helping small enterprises that are being started by these young people. Just that day, we were talking about APIs, uh, I mean, I say APIs, um, Nigerian hair or so. Mm. And then I heard that the logo was designed out of the country. And I'm wondering, you know, you, you have Nigerians who are making cars. No matter, even on a small scale, young Nigerians, you know, one journey from just and other Nigerians, even innocent, the popular innocent. And you expect that, because the truth is that there is no faster way to create employment than, than by ensuring that your industries are working well. So if you have those who are working, who says that you cannot have a policy to show that, look, Nigerian makers will be the, the official government. These are things that, but you see them, our lawmakers, every now and then, they import bulletproof cars, they import cars from at mind boggling amounts, and then they come and tell us that they want to pay us stipends. It's, it's for me, it's an insult on, on, the, on all of us at Nigeria because you, you, you have to show sincerity by your acts. You have to walk the talk. You know, you, what are, where are the policies that will encourage? Who says that government can make sure that, oh, most of the, 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 the contracts or the stuff that have been contracted out are connected to Nigerians and to young Nigerians. Who says that they can't do that? If they do things like that, when Nigeria knows that, oh, I, if in other part of the world, there are some contracts that you know are targeted at citizens, and you know, you just know that this that. So even as a business person, as an entrepreneur, you know that at least I'm guaranteed. Let me just keep my books clean. I am guaranteed that the government will patronize me. And government, you know, one of the major sources of contract in this country are the government in agencies and what have you. So I, in my opinion, I think the Senate is not being sincere, and and I'm not happy they need to really stop. Is this a bit of saying the federal government should? The federal government should. Elementary government shows that government has three tests. I mean, has three hams. Mm. The, the executive, legislative, and judiciary. They are part and parcel of the government. They should not. They should stop making a bit of saying. The, I think the executive is only the government. They are part and parcel of the government. They 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 they, they eat a large chunk of the resources. So they should not say that the government. I see they are. I see that they are not supposed to be. We want to show the government the way the executive the way. So they should stop saying the government should. They are part and parcel. They are the government. So if the centre are saying, they should start saying we all. We should. we no not not okay. Not the executive Thank you very should. much, uh, Daniel Dupe is a legal practitioner. Thank you for being part of the conversation this evening. Here. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take our class reports now, and when we come back, I'll give you my take. <laughs> It is the 14th Wallace Showinka Award for Investigative Reporting held in Lagos to commemorate the World Anti-Corruption Day 2019. Out of over 100 entries, 14 journalists nominated received recognition with Isine Ibaga emerging best investigative reporter. This is in respect to his undercover report that revealed the rot in the Nigerian police force some of the best in the world. If we have the same opportunity, we have the same resources with uh, colleagues outside here. With one voice, this journalist and, and other keynote speakers are demanding the immediate release of Sahara Reporter's publisher, Omoyele Shore, after his rearrest last Friday. Lead counsel, Femi Falana, speaks. Malam Garba and a pastor, Femi Adeshina, issued some statement in the last 24 hours insulting our collective intelligence. I do hope that by tomorrow, both of them will have to apologize to the Nigerian people. And there is more condemnation for the proposed social media bill, which Amnesty International and other experts here view as an attempt to curb free speech. I'm saying that the right to freedom of speech in Nigeria is under siege. 
If anybody, any administration be talking about regulating the social media, it should be this administration right now. Why? Because we remember 1984. Two minutes of time. Imminent threat concerning the social media bill, the hate speech, and the reintroduction of the NGO bill in different forms in the name of regulation, we know is just an, an attempt to repress free speech, freedom of expression, and for people to actually offer dissent when they do not agree with policies or practices which is happening in their community. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. It's time for my take. It is truly depressing that Nigeria is experiencing a blackout, all because the government has once again neglected those who dedicated their lifetime, labor and sweat to making the country's work better. Now, for years, the government has ignored these people's demands. Six years down the line, why would they strike? So, dear Nigerian government, you need to do better. You have to do better. We're done patting you on the back or begging. It's time for you to do the job or we will show you the way out. This is simply unacceptable. We can't keep running around in circles when you have a job to do but you're not doing it. If countries like as little as Ghana have constant light, it beats me to in totality, beats me why the giant of Africa has been thrust into darkness due to non-payment of salaries. Are we not becoming the joke or the mockery of Africa? And now the Senate is proposing stipends be paid to unemployed Nigerians, but is it sustainable? How are they going to sustain it? Salaries are still being owed in many states. The NLC is threatening a showdown on December 31. In fact, it was reported in October 2019 that Nigeria owes about 4 trillion naira in domestic debt. So how do we even want to start handling this? Or is this a ploy by some politicians to siphon more money belonging to Nigerian people? I don't know. But I think it's better we stabilize our economy before taking up such a huge task. And of course, we need to be sure that we can trust the process. If we still decide to take up this venture, it should be so structured that no one would be able to steal a dime. My name is Mary Anacom. It's been Plus Politics. <laughs>